Welcome, we're the Macomb County Genealogy Group. You can find MCGG at our blog website, on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and at our YouTube channel. You can contact us at either of the listed emails seen here. The MCGG Friday Group has been meeting for over 48 years and our MCGG Let's Talk Genealogy Discussion Group has been meeting for 16 years. During this pandemic and the library's renovation, we are meeting virtually once a month as a combined meeting. Many MCGG members volunteer their time in a variety of ways to benefit the genealogy community and the Mount Clemens Public Library. This is the MCGG Friday and MCGG Let's Talk Genealogy Combined Virtual Meeting, March 9th, 2022. Our topic tonight is Ready, Set, the 1950 Census releases next month in our Let's Talk Genealogy discussion group format. If this is your first time attending a MCGG meeting, welcome. Attend a meeting and you are a member. MCGG has no dues. If you would like to be added to our mailing list, please send an email to the email shown on the screen. We try to keep our emails down to a reasonable number each month, mostly meeting reminders. And now for some announcements. We were a little slow to press the record button for this meeting. As a result, our recording starts in the middle of this announcement getting about half of, um, only getting half of what we anticipated digitized, but um, my thought is still some is better than nothing. Um, so we're going to start with the early, um, the earliest that we have of the Mount Clemens monitor, um, which there's a couple um, 1869 issues, and then it really begins in uh, 1880. And then we're hoping to get to about like 1905 digitized. So like that 25 year range. Um, but yeah, so if anybody has any questions, feel free to, um, let me know. You can, um, drop it in the comments or whatever. But, yeah, we're excited that we won and we thank all of you, um, who participated. You guys really, it was really a group effort and I thank all of you for all of your, um, help with tweeting, uh, and you guys helped us win this. Thank you. I was explaining to him, I counted about 15, 17 of the genealogy group members plus three that I knew of from the library. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was about 18 or 20. And there was additional people tweeting also. And, um, you know, it, it varied from a few tweets to a whole bunch of tweets and every tweet counted. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> to help get so us Brittany, there. Do, you, does, do we know how they actually ended up counting those tweets? Uh, they didn't uh, actually say like, who was first place, who was second place. They just announced both us and East Lansing as the winners. Um, I uh, signed up for a free Twitter hashtag in Lizer, which I don't think was completely accurate, but um, rough estimate over 10,000 tweets. Um, but again, I don't know how accurate that is. So I'd say anywhere between like 8,000 to 10,000 tweets that uh -huh. we did. We had, I didn't get, yeah, we had to get we had to be up there because yeah you know all of us were tweeting like crazy we got in twitter yeah. jail uh, many times <laughs> <laughs> so yeah <laughs> i think and i then, figured and out then twitter we, and jail then we created, was if you were going too fast <laughs> we created um well i i actually was taking my time but i think i just reached my limit it would tell me my the message that said you reached your limit then i created an account for my husband <laughs> he'll yeah. Tweet out of that count ever, but yeah. <laughs> handy. Or will I? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. No, my I husband. Was I was the keeping same count, hand hand count, but to. I couldn't tell who was tweeting or or re retweeting. That would have been involved a little bit more work to figure right. it out. Yeah. So. Uh, well, that was good. Yeah, I was retweeting at first, <laughs> that count, but that was only one day. I caught on fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, I wanted to, I oh. missed the first part, Brittany. So we won, but you said that, um, Diane, was that your cat? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. 
Um, At least we just got the side. <laughs> well, because there's two winners this year, we'll have less that will be digitized. Is that what you yes. said? Okay. Yeah. So um, approximately it'll be 8,450 pages of newspaper um, mm -hmm. before it was um, 16,900. Um, so, um, and I don't know how they get those exact numbers. Like why not? Like, you know. 8,500 okay. instead of, you know, 8,450. Um, okay. But yeah. And then I know um, I haven't had a chance to talk to um, Brandon, the director yet, but he mentioned that he, depending on the cost, he would be interested in getting the other half, like paying to have the other half digitized as well. Oh. Um, but I just haven't had a chance to talk with him about that yet. Nice. That's great. Mm -hmm. And then again, the future like that I really want to provide for, um, you know, the Macomb Daily and just like the collection in general is to digitize a lot of this and make it available online. Um, it's not going to be a fast process by any means necessary, um, but that is my end goal is to try to get all of that um, uh -huh. digitized. So, so um, when they're digitized, then they'll be on CMU's uh, Clark Historical Library, uh, the digital newspaper collection. <laughs> Uh, I think they'll have a link to it, but it's really going to be hosted on the Library of Congress's Chronicling America website oh, yeah. okay. um, because they have an initiative um, and a grant through the National Endowment of the Humanities, um, and only one library in each state can apply for this grant, but they get reciprocal funds throughout the years to continue on digitizing different newspapers throughout uh, the state. And so Central uh, Clark Historical Library, they applied for that grant and have won it. So that's why they're the ones who um, supply the newspapers directly to this Chronicling America on um, the Library of Congress. So when you go to the Clark Historical Library and you actually find the digital, the digitized newspapers there, when you mm -hmm. click on those links, they actually, that's actually being hosted on the Library of Congress's website then? Um, I'm not sure about all of them, um, like all the newspapers they've digitized, but I know specifically like for this grant, um, like any of the previous winners um, for the past, I think like five or six years, they are hosted on the Library of Congress. So. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Other announcements? I have a question. Um, is Family Search asking for volunteers to digitize the 1950 census this time? Oh, we'll get to that during the presentation. Okay. <laughs> well, not really the presentation, the talk, because <laughs> this is a let's talk discussion format. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll be going through the, you know, asking questions and sharing and, but I'll start it off. Okay. So tonight's topic, since we don't have any other announcements, is uh, ready, set, the 1950 census release is next month. So we just have a few weeks to wait and we're going to have to be patient. Let me share my screen. Lisa, just to forewarn you, you are a little glitchy right at the moment. So it, as you switch over, be careful. If anything goes bad, I'll take over. <laughs> okay. All right. I've been having internet problems. The, bo the board's aware of this. So if I drop, I will be packing up real quick and zooming down gross back to get to the temporary library with Teresa but uh, we're crossing our fingers that we're going to be okay today. Okay, so um, the 1950 census is going to be released on April 1st, 2022. Um, I'm not sure if that's meaning midnight or like start a business day, we'll find out. Um, the um, link that I have at the, it's in the first and the second paragraph, um, takes you to this page. And this is where the link to the dedicated website will be shared or appear on April 1st. So you'll go to here, figure out, find the link, and it will take you to the website where the 1950 census will appear. The images, um, this is the very first census that um, will have an index released at the same time. Hmm. Um, it has been done through CR um, and they, um, okay, I might be fading out here. Bear with me. Um, so you'll be able to search on this new website by name and location. 
Um, then that very same day, under the book download is where everyone and their brother, um, ancestry, find my past, uh, my heritage, um, what other large website or small website, um, they will be downloading all the images from this uh, Amazon cloud service. So they'll just be getting the images that day. No one has them yet, except for the National Archives. And um, so it's going to take a while for them, you know, ancestry, my heritage, find my past, to um, get their index going. Um, I'm going to jump on the handout to the back um, and explain this. So on census release date, the National Archives brand new dedicated website will have the images that you can browse through or you you can do a search for your people on this new website. Ancestry will be going to the Amazon cloud service and um, downloading their images that day. They are going to also use AI OCR technology to make an index for the 1950 census. Then as they're digitizing or OCR, not digitizing, as they are creating the AI OCR um, index, they will be having volunteers from Family Search review the work of the AI OCR and then make corrections as needed. So eventually we'll have at least two AI OCR indexes for this census. I'm not sure how the other companies are going to handle it, but I'm going to assume probably similar or they will do the traditional route. Um, family search, there we go. Volunteer Indexing volunteers actually creating an index. They are going to be reviewing an index. So they can um, sign up, you can sign up for updates here and then sign up for the volunteer project if you want to. Um, if you go to Roots Tech, and go into the sessions, and I believe you can get to it from typing 1950 census, you'll find a variety of presentations that took place um last week and a few of them are showing examples but understand that these examples are examples they've created no one anywhere has seen the 1950 actual 1915 excuse me 1950 census pages yet they are just recreation cr not recreations creations by them in order to have an example of what the indexing is going to look like. Um, it was um, the one I watched last week was um, a Q&A. So there's a variety of ones here that you can look watch to learn more about the census that's coming. Trying to save my bandwidth. Okay, so back here at um, the National Archives website, I want to point out a few things. You want to learn more, and so these are in 1950 census. You're going to click this link here. Getting a warning again. So if you click on this image, you'll see the form, but they go through and list all the questions. Um, that the form on your handout is one I created for a visual. Let me backtrack so I don't have so many blank census forms. So you can see this population census, the P1 form. This is the second page. And in something I'll show you, you can definitely learn more about this, but this second page was not microfilmed, or was not 
filmed when the microfilm of the census was created. So the backside was not filmed. And after microfilming the P1 forms, uh, about 10 years later, they destroyed them, the original hard copies. So this information here only appears in statistical format. So you can't see what each person answered. There's an individual census report, P2 form that was used in some cases, P4 for crews of vessels, P5 for overseas census report, P8 for Indian reservation, Um, or census of population and housing, and the forms continue on for a bit. Some are by area, and some are, most of them are by area here for the different um, locations. So those are the forms. Now, the, um, National Archives is also, has, is also putting on a series of um, presentations regarding the 1950 census. This March 2nd one is an overview of what's on the 1950 census. And you can download the slides that are on it. Uh, where did I hide those? Just a second. March 2nd, that's the one I want. Okay, so here you can actually listen to the presentation, but you can see here what the slides appear like. And it talks about what, what was done and why it was done. And um, um, you can learn a whole lot of facts about this census. Now, is this information from Roots Tech that what you were just showing us? No, this one is from the National Archives itself. Okay. okay. So one one I would particularly pay attention to is, is the one coming up on March 30th. It's the 1950 census website design, develop, and features to expect. And if if you click on it right now, you can actually see what is probably most of the slides. Um, it does not give the dedicated website for the 1950 census URL. Um, they were smart enough not to put that in there. Um, so, um, but you can at least see their talk about how they developed it. And then you get a kind of sneak peek of what it looked like at the time that they did this uh, presentation slides. And you can see they got various um, looks to it, but you can see and learn about that. So the slides are there, but text isn't as far as what they're going to be saying. So I would keep an eye on this. They've got other ones coming during the rest of the year. There's additional one on the numeration districts that's on March 16th. Um, so there's that. What's next? Oh, and another way to keep up on incoming information, since it's uh, coming down to the wire here, is the archives of the United States blog, or excuse me, archivist, and select the month and read about what they're revealing about the 1950 census during that month. Oh, Lisa, the, uh -huh. pres the presentations from the archive, are they recorded and, and the recordings available or just the slides? Yeah, 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 They're, they are available. Um, the slides are available for most of them now. Let me go back to there. Um, so if you scroll down here, you can see, you can watch this. Um... Okay, thanks. 
video. If you want to see the slides, you can just download the PDF of the slides. But this one, the video is not available until it's actually shown. So it's a it was nice. a question, a question of availability. If we're not, if we're busy that day, we can watch it the next. Day. Right, exactly, exactly. So it will be recorded, and well, as long as someone remembers to hit the record button, um, and the, but the slides are there, so you can kind of get a sneak peek. Uh, but like I said, you won't get the verbiage that they are conveying. But there's a lot of information on the National Archives, and basically. They're the ones revealing all the information. So I, I tend to look here first for the most reliable information anywhere on the National Archives site. Okay, so that's where I've gotten my information. Um, that one's already open here. Okay, so here's some more from um, Family Search. Again, if you want to help them review the AI OCR index, um, that will be done by Ancestry. You can participate here. If you just want the information, you can sign up for updates. Um, now, on the National Archives dedicated website for this, their OCR, excuse me, AI OCR index, there will be a way for you to provide corrections on that one as well. And that will be, you know, any, any person. So they talk about the difference between prior indexing projects and this one. And in this one, um, you're going to, for the 1950, you are going to be able to choose the area that you want to index. Okay, <laughs> I'm still here. So um, there's other related articles there, but they're older. Um, okay, so that's that one. Is there any? the other website to show you those are basically the web those websites now how do we find our people well there will be an index of sorts but if you want to prepare yourself you're going to kind of create a, a research list who are my people that are alive on the 1950 census and how do i um, who's alive on in 1950 on april 1st and where are they um if you have an idea yeah, let's see, Let me go back to start here. There's instructions for um, EDs. All right, we're gonna type it in. archives.gov slash research slash census slash team 50. Finding dates. All right, so you can, you know where your person was. You can locate the enumeration district maps for your location. Um, okay, so we are going to find the link to the catalog. Numeration districts and related maps. We're going to put in 1950 plus home plus Michigan. Uh, let's just look at, see them all. View online holdings. We are going to maps and charts. Okay, and then Okay, let's click on there. This is Mount Clemens. Yeah, to the 
you got 50 129 is an enumeration district, 50 144. And I'm going to county. I've already downloaded some of these. You can download them if you want, if you need to. So some of them, like this part of Macomb Township is 51.13. This one is 51.12. So this one's a little vague and I'm still searching out to find a more detailed. Um, Clinton Township is 50-23 to 50-30. I'm trying to still find a more detailed map to narrow it down to figure out. So if, if you're in a larger area, this helps um, shrink it down. So this is Mount Clemens. You just look at the streets. So this is Cass Ave. And so if someone was living at the library, they would be in numeration district 5128. Um, has anyone got anyone in Mount Clemens? You're on Arns, you're in 50 119. And that's basically all you need to note is you find your location, look at the map, find your streets. And my grandmother is father would be in 50 131. So it's not too hard. Now, another website. Uh, let's see how well we do here. Another. Do, do, do. Looks like Lisa dropped off. Can everybody hear me? She did. Yes. Okay, I think where I she can. was go I think where she was going, so I'll pick up where she left off, was uh, Steve Morris's website. And I will go into uh, share my screen mode in just a second, but let me get the website up. Uh, back up a few. Okay. All right, and I'm gonna share my screen. It's been a while, so I got to remember how to do this. Um, Big green button on the bottom. Yeah, I, I found it. Now I got to find the screen on the list. Uh, so, share. Okay, this is Steve Morris's website. Um, it's called One Step Web Pages from Stephen Morris. If you used it for the other censuses, it is working for the 1950 census. So you're going to want to work, work your way down here um, to U.S. Census and the 1980 to 1950 census ED finder. And again, if you can enter how much you know, so if you enter um michigan macomb no. helps if i enter the right state first <laughs> it's surprising there's not a macomb county in minnesota <laughs> and then enter the town, um, you'll see all the enumeration districts listed. Now, if you have a house number and street, um, it will ask you for more information. So um, let's go 150 CAS. And because it, it doesn't really know where 150 CAS is, we can go to another map and see, we can go out to Google Maps 
and see where that location is. So we would just keep entering streets in here it could narrow it down for us. The other option is we can see ED maps from Macomb County and it will take us to directly to the ED images. So I can go Mount Clemens. Um, actually, the, the top one up here is the viewer. The bottom one down here is direct links to the, to the maps. So I can click on that link and boom, we have the narrow map of Mount Clemens. And we can zoom in on it or we can zoom out. Um, so we, we can look for the library that way. And that opens up in a separate browser window for you plus I do like these maps. They're, ni they're nice and detailed and colorful. Um, they use local maps from the, provided by the cities and towns in 1950. So it's pretty clear. Sometimes though, keep in mind if you, um, you know, if you know, if you're thinking the person, well, they lived in the same place um, for the same time and probably have been there since 1950, Keep in mind, address, no, address numbers do change, street names do change. I was running into an incident today when I was looking up one in uh, East Detroit where um, the street name changed after 1950. And uh, you know, the street on the current map was not the street that it was on the 1950 map. And this is set up on those streets. So, um, Sometimes it's helpful to go out to Google Maps, locate it, line the two up to line the two maps up together and go from there. I'm going to unshare my screen now if I can remember how to do that. Turn my video back on and ask if there are any questions. Yes, I have a question. Um, sure. Did I understand, Lisa, to say that? The housing part is on a separate page or on the back, and so that and that won't be on. It won't show up. I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure how the schedules are going to work. I know in the past we've gotten the primary schedule. The problem is it was a two-page form. the 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 example shows us the back page of that two-page form. So there was data mm -hmm. collected that was on that back page. That was never microfilmed, and the records were destroyed. Okay. So we basically, there's no way to know what was on the back side of the primary form. Now, that's, and this is where I'm, where I'm a little confused myself, is that primary form obviously was used in the continental 48 states. Remember, at that time, Alaska and Hawaii were still territories but they also recorded the other territories. They have other forms for that. I don't know if they'll have the same form or those forms that were shown in the example for those until this pops up. Will, um, there, be a, so, will there be a blank one that shows? No, no it, wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a blank one. There's not, gonna, there's not gonna be a blank there. What I'm saying is the normal population schedule for 1950 will be similar to what we saw in 1940 based on those first page exam that those those examples okay there's also multiple forms down there how much of those other pages are going to come with this release i don't know but if mm -hmm. they use those pages to census because they, this is going to include military this is going to include the territories this is going to mm -hmm. include parts people that were census that were never census before, at least 1940 and prior. So if they were not, they, what we may see though, is when we get to those people, we may see those different forms because they may not have been census on the primary form that was used for the continental 48 states. Mm -hmm. I remember the census person coming to our house. I was eight years old and Ask them asking questions and ha having these huge books that they were recording things in. And mm. after they left, my mother was very indignant that they asked if we had indoor plumbing. 
So <laughs> that was on there someplace. <laughs> I, I'm sure it was. Um, again, there were, and that's what looking, if you want to research and find out the questions asked and what your, what your parents were actually asked mm -hmm. in, that, in that census, you can look at those forms and see the entire form and the entire question, but that back, but just know that we're never going to see that back page. Okay, you know, thank you. And, and the answers to that back page, it's just was it's it's lost. The other issue we're going to see with this release is even though our digital digitization technology has improved since the release of the 1940 census, so I expect these to be crisper and cleaner images they came from microfilm. So we won't have the color images we have with the, with, like with the World War II graph cards that have, that have come out in the last few years that because they were, they were imaged from the original records were, in that, were imaged in color. So sometimes we, we may still have some readability issues due to the fact that that looks like it was a light green, light green form and I'm sure they, they instructed the enumerators to use black ink. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, I have a question in chat. Okay, thank you. And I've got Beverly Bishop in the waiting room. Okay. What if the orange line is directly on a street? Let me go back to a map. Okay, and let me zoom in. Okay, if an orange line is directly on a street, like down here and oh, let me share my screen. That I have. Okay. If we look down here, there's an orange line running down Robertson Street. Basically, the, the houses on the south side of that line would be in um, whatever district is down to the south. The houses on the north side of that line would be in 5131. So you have to figure out which side of the street the address is on um, to figure out which enumeration district. Normally, the address patterns don't change, so you can still use modern maps to figure that one out. Any other questions? Yes, Diane, unmute yourself and talk. <laughs> what exactly are we going to see? Are we going to see like the names and the ages like we do on other censuses? Yes, yeah. That information, um, let me... Um, let me get to um, the, the, and I'm gonna share my screen again. And this is the form. This is what they've, um, the, the National Arc or the Census Bureau actually used. It's a, it looks a little bit more similar to the 1940 form. Than Could you previous zoom way form. in please? Pardon? Could you zoom way in please? I, Thank you. That, <laughs> Unfortunately, that's about as good as it gets. Uh, the, 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 the sample they gave is, is, is it full screen as, as, la as large as the web page will let me zoom into it. But it's basically asking the same question, similar questions we've seen before. To really get a, get a handle on it, what you need to do is, let me download it, try downloading it first. Um, let's open it there. And of course you open there, so um, let me change screens. Because now I've got it in a format where I can zoom in. I'm gonna drop the share and then reshare it. Hang on one second. Looks like Lisa's back <laughs> or coming on. Let me drop this share and then I'll reshare it. Okay, is that better? <laughs> Yes. All right. This is basically it. It's still a little hard to read from from uh, where we we yeah, downloaded. Yeah, there you are. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but um, we have name, we have relationship, we have um, race, sex, um, how old on last birthday, widow, married, divorce, um, and I don't have a breakdown of this and some of this even for me is a little hard to read on my monitor but it looks the 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 form looks very very similar to previous censuses so it's not it's not going to be anything we're not used to looking at 
Um, so, questions about employment, um, what kind of work, what kind of business or industry, and classification of worker. And then again, like 1940 down at the bottom, um, there are more questions, but there, not every person on the, on the forum is asked those questions. So that's what it's basically it's gonna look like. We're gonna get a photocopy of this filled in in handwriting or, a, or an image of this filled in in handwriting is what the form's gonna be. And um, if you get one of the number five, looks like number five, um, number 30, 30, certain people on the list, the ones with the little call out over here, where my hand is pointing, they're going to have the supplemental questions at the bottom. So that's basically what we're going to get um, with the with the forum. Lisa, I went over Steve Morris with him a little bit. Okay, and that's I thought, great. I thought that's where you were going next. So that's, that's where, where I was. <laughs> and then we got some we got some questions about what's covered on the census, and I tried to answer them to the best of my ability. Okay. <laughs> uh, any other questions about this wonderful uh, yeah. release? So, so yes. Um, um, we can't get uh, a, a location other by just putting in the uh, a physical address. We have to take that and find it on the enumeration map and put the enumeration number on. Is that oh, no, correct? No, no. Um, if you can't. They were originally showing all the ED, how to use the ED to find your people, um, if you knew where they were. But yeah. with the National Archives announcing that this AI OCR index will be available that first day, you try that one first. Put in the name and a location. Um, location meaning um, county or town or township and state. Okay. Okay, so uh, you're not going to yeah. be able to put in an address and do a search. You're going to put in the location as far as, um, like I said, town, township, city, township. city um, county, um, and use that. Okay. Um, better than nothing. Uh, hopefully, yeah. um, your people oh, yeah. were, um, o you know, the AI OCR caught your person the way it was written was readable by that technology and it will save you a step. But if it doesn't work, um, if you know the location, then just search on the location without the person's name and then do that. Uh, the alternate way is if you have used the maps and figured out because you know where they were living, what that ED uh, number is, then you can go in that route. So these are okay. options to help census. Now, if you're oh. not sure where they are in 1950, um, on the back of the handout, we have a variety of resources to help you determine where your people are. Um, you're going to use city directories, telephone books, um, mom or grandma's address book. We all remember to save that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cleaning mm -hmm. out the house. <laughs> um, land deeds might help. Um, the 1940 census might help. You mm -hmm. know, they were here and hopefully they're still there. Um, the ED will be a little bit different, but should be um, help you. If you know that location, then look on the 1950 ED maps. Um, a probate list of, of an heirs list from about that time period might help. Tax records might help. Um, draft records. Um, if they're newly arrived, um, passenger arrival records, you know, where are you going? Um, border crossing records, uh, town records, if you're in searching for people in New England, naturalization records, yearbooks, vital records, correspondence, uh, letters and postcards. We save those things from grandma and mm -hmm. mom and family, right? So those are ideas of where to look 
uh, to help you determine where your people are. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, a uh, question just on the general um, data coming out of the National Archives. Are, are they going to be bundled, bundling their OCR, the AOCR, by ED district or in various forms? I, I mean, if we, if, if for those of us that are basically gathering an entire municipality or right, township, which is, we basically which is make we a did. list of all our EDs and then just go to the site and pull down the maps and pull down all the all the the data, the OCR data, and all the all the images, right? And we're done. If you go to that Amazon site, um, that's probably where the ED and the location is going to be helpful. Um, if you're, because that was the way we had to do it for the 1940, because it was released without an index. So we had to figure out our EDs, download that ED, and then we could search for our people and print out or copy out that page where our people were. Um, I still have those somewhere on a external hard drive for the whole ED. Um, but with the, the website, um, the dedicated website, I'm not sure if you could extract out the images for just one ED that way, or if you have to use the Amazon cloud way, because they're two different websites, but they're pulling from the same. Well, I'm not, the images being the actual census pages, uh, right. as opposed to the map, yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah, what it's basically are available the, the, right now. The smallest granularity that I can get is my, kind of the question, but we'll see because we don't know. That's part of it. So as I was suggesting at the beginning to watch that March 30th um, presentation by the National Archives because that would have latest information and I doubt they're going to announce the um, website name URL. Um, in that presentation. Um, so we'll have to wait till the next day. Is that uh, um, uh, link on our uh, handout? The March 30th? Uh, yes, it is on the back page under National Archives webinar presentation series. Okay. Anyone else? There's a I couple have a there's a couple in the chat, Lisa. One earlier asked about having a radio. Maybe they asked about a TV on this one, or was that still too early? No, I, it was later on. I can tell you that because my father well, was fenced about that question on some census. I don't know whether it was 60 or 70. <laughs> okay, well, I'm looking. I got a better copy of the 1950 census form. If you go to the website, Download the PDF. It is much clearer and much more readable than the JPEG I, I downloaded and had on screen. And basically, here's, here's the question. Uh, widow, married, divorce, state or foreign country where the person was born, if a foreign born if na is naturalized, what this person was doing most of the last work week, i.e. keeping house or something else, did this person have any work at last week? not counting work around the house is this person looking for work even though he didn't work last week does this person have a job or business how many hours of work did work how many hours did he work last week what kind of work are you doing what kind of business and class of worker and the supplemental questions are um what foreign country what country and state was he living in a year ago um what country was his mother, mother and father born in? What is the highest grade of school attended? Uh, did he finish this grade? Has he ever attended school since February 1st? Um, how many weeks has he been looking for work? Um, and last week, last year, 1949, how much money did he earn working as an employee for salary or wages? How much money did he earn working in his own business profession, farm or practice? Last year, how much money did he receive from interest, dividends, veterans allowances, pensions, rents, income, et cetera? Last year, how much money did he, 
did his relatives in this household for earning. So ever served in the armed forces, World War II, World War I, any other, including uh, present service. Those are the questions. If you're really curious about the questions, go to the National Archives website, down, download the PDF form. Uh, mm. And also, what is an ED? ED is an enumeration district. It's a small part of a city, town, or township that um, they're going to census all those people together and count them for statistical analysis. So that by knowing that number, it helps us to narrow down how many forms we have to look for if we can't find them in, a, in an alphabetical index. Lisa, you got anything to add? Uh, no, you did good. Thank um, you. Yeah, that PDF is a lot more readable than the, the JPEG. Um, I just went there and got it myself. Now, unlike the 1940 census, there is no X in, inside a circle to indicate who answered the questions. Very disappointing to find that one out. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was kind of disappointing to me. I want to know who provided the wrong information. <laughs> <sighs> uh, I have a question. Yep, go ahead. Um, what was the exact date that they took the census? Or April 1st. <laughs> questions were answered as of April 1st, 1950. Um, whether, but obviously one person can, could not very likely not get through a whole enumeration district on one day. So you will usually, and I, did you happen to notice, let's see. Where's the, well, if I get out of that folder, I might find what I'm looking for. Uh, P. Um, usually on prior census, there was a date of visit on the form, the page. Let me look. Pull mine up. Date Street started as up at the upper right on the form. Yep, date, yep, right. So that will give you an indication of what actual day they were at the houses on that page. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any other questions? Did I miss anything? Um, there are a bunch of YouTube videos by Joel, Wein Joel Weintraub. He works with Steve Morse on a lot of these um, one-step indexes and things like that. Um, so you, if you're interested in another perspective, um, there's his playlist. He, uh, his um, YouTube video site is under uh, JDW Talks and that's on the back of your handout. Ah, okay. I think the adrenaline's coming down now. <laughs> Um, did you show them the numerators book? The, the, oh, no, I, that I didn't. All right. It's minor. Um, let me share screen. And there it is. So there's a few copies of this, digital copies of this online um, at Hathi Trust. Uh, but Google has one that you can actually download. And it looks like this. So if you want to know uh, the way the numerators were instructed on how to ask questions or fill in um, answers based on the responses of the um, individuals, uh, there's a lot of detail in here. Hmm. Hmm. So that's one way to learn more. Um, and you'll see this in color in black and white. But this is the one I know you can download for sure. So any more questions? <laughs> Rebecca. 
Wonder if they were honest about their earnings. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bob got that one. I have another question. Yeah, go ahead. Once we get to the enumeration date, then we have to go page by page like we used to have to with my um, microfilm? No. On the National Archives website, you'll be able to put in a name and a location and then okay. do the search. Like if we know the street that somebody lived on. Uh, you won't be or able to put the zero. street in. You won't be able to put the street in, but put in that location, the city or the township and the county and <clears> the state. We're talking Detroit. <laughs> okay, so you put in Detroit and then type, you know, right. put in the name and see right. how many hits you get. Right. So it's kind Lower of like Lower East Side. So you're um you'll see if it, you know, try the easy way first. Put the name in and location uh -huh. and uh -huh. you know, you may get 10 hits with, you know, similar names. Um just I think one important point to remember about the OCR index is we're all thinking this is a disaster waiting, waiting, to, waiting to happen when we open up Pandora's box on April 1st. OCR technology for recognizing handwriting has improved vastly um, even in the last couple of years. So it's not gonna be perfect. There's gonna be a lot of mistakes and yeah, there's gonna be people you're gonna have to go, go look the old way where you're flipping through the digital microfilm because you know the ED and that's why we're, we're teaching EDs, but we might be presently surprised at how many people we actually just find straight off of the alpha index. Right, and um, be flexible with your spelling, especially with the OCR. Uh, if you're expecting an E and you see an O, and maybe that's the worst uh, wrong on the name, click on it and look at it. It probably is right. Um, we know from experience with the newspaper digit digitization that are OCR. You know, what could this letter possibly be misread as? Um, A, E, O are very similar in looks. Um, N's and M's, uh, W's and V's, um, a K and an R. You know, they're very similar except, you know, Maybe the, it didn't read the handwriting quite right. So be flexible. We'll, we'll know more uh, April 1st. 10 years ago, <clears throat> I think the thing came out on the second because the first was a Sunday and everything on the internet crashed all over the place. Should we wait a few days before we do this or a week or two? Um, <laughs> you could. Um, there are there going to be crashes possibly um, I don't know how much duplication they have um, built into the site for access points um, mm -hmm. so you know if it, if it's down be patient wait a little bit try it an odd time during the day I know I can't wait either <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had I had my mom and my dad's EDs for the 1940 um, within 10 minutes of the images being placed online, or the you know the where they had them accessible that year for that census. I kept so I getting my kicked EDs off down site. and I was looking at mom and dad within 15 minutes of the start. Mm. Yeah. I get kicked off of many sites uh, on in 2012. I found some other things as a result, but <laughs> the enumerator had legible handwriting. Well, it can't be any worse than 1836 or 1840, rather, when they went through and and asked people what street they lived on, and it was a German interviewing. So the the, the north south street was cited as R H E I N road instead of Ryan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you still have that um, disparity of languages. Hopefully, not as much, but I'm sure it's still there. Do we have uh, any idea if they ask people from the 
enumeration district to do this or similar area or not bring in somebody that had no idea how to write Ryan or Rain? <laughs> Um, I believe the uh, numerators were local, hired temporary workers. Mm -hmm. um, I would check that book. Look in the book. It might mm -hmm. explain things. Or that, um, that next webinar or on um, March 16th, I think it was. Yes, the March 16th 16. webinar. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was talking about the EDs. So everyone got their research list ready? <laughs> I have a question about something different when we're ready. Sure, go ahead. Um, so Family Tree Maker by Matt Kiev, is it supported in the United States or in the Ukraine? I've not seen or heard anything yet on how that is going for them. Um, but I do know they have some American employees. Um, just, uh, you know, hope, hope that uh, they can uh, hold out and uh, save their country. No, oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not on the user. I'm not on the user group face page for that, which is more active than their commercial Facebook page. So I haven't seen or heard any um, details mm -hmm. yet. Um, oh, that's interesting. I didn't know there there was one. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, it, it's a user group. Um, yeah, Jean. Um, Software, uh, uh, Software Mac Kiev is the company that was actually doing the development for the Mac version of Family Tree Maker back when uh, Ancestry owned it. And all of us wonderful genealogists in the world um, put up enough of a disappointment that um, Ancestry decided to sell it and they bought it. Um, so they're now developing both the Mac and the PC version. So it's been based in Kyiv um, in the Ukraine um, since the, the sale. Um, and they mostly do the live chat for um, support. Um, I haven't had to use it, try to use it lately. So I'm not sure if that is um, how active or inactive that is at the moment. Mm -hmm. I would I would think they're busy running for their lives. Not no, no they're not running for their lives. They're they're fighting for their lives. <laughs> oh well, yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, as opposed to doing a genealogy, anything. Oh, let's just hope it turns out. Yeah. 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 Hi there. Would this be a good time that I could make a comment? Sure. I was going to ask if I'm still on the schedule for next month to talk about when disaster hits your family. Yes, you are. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to put a plug in for that right now. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and, um, you know, maybe all of you during your genealogy uh, research have found some super fantastic disasters that your ancestors had to live through and make it out of somehow. And it always made me wonder, well, what did they do? Which only required more digging and research and going to newspapers and things. So I've uncovered quite a number uh, just doing research of houses, uh, mostly in Mount Clemens, but uh, a number of other areas. And we found some, um, some real sad things and it made our whole COVID thing come into perspective that our other generations have also suffered some, some real big upheaval in their life. So we'll be doing that. And if any of you have one that you uncovered through your genealogy, I welcome you uh, to bring it because I will be doing about a 40 minute, a lot of slides showing how it developed and how we learned it. And, and that's about it. And then questions that maybe you would have one to share and how you found it. And also, do you want to leave some time to talk about the 1950 census again? Because this will be after it came out. Yeah, we can um, do some questions and answers afterwards. I hopefully we'll have stable internet by then. 
Yeah. Let yeah. me let me share my screen and I will. Um, this is the uh, flyer for our next meeting that oh. Deb is so gracious to um, mm -hmm. present to us. <laughs> Oh, I love it. You even got Jones Street. You, oh my gosh, yeah. you nailed it. That is, well, <laughs> wait till I tell you about Jones Street. Oh my goodness. Okay. This Great. is the house, I think, right? Yes, yes. That's where the catastrophe struck. So mm. how they overcame or how they lived through it, how they overcame it, what they did. Uh, so we're going to have some fun with that because it's, it's quite sensational, but, you know, very cultural, really makes you feel like Americans can get through things. So it's fun. Good. I love it. Right. <laughs> so I'll be putting that on the, the blog website and everywhere else uh, soon. <laughs> Great. Rebecca mm -hmm. says her curiosity is tweaked. <laughs> <laughs> what? I missed. Rebecca <laughs> says her curiosity is tweaked from the okay, chat. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. We had this as, as an option when, um, the, most of the board uh, wanted the war of uh, Macomb County in war year 1943. So like, yeah, let's do this the next one. So those presentations are great. And yes, um, are. I think you all enjoy them. Enjoy it next month. I just kept looking at my uh, notice that kept coming up. Uh, your internet is not stable. Your internet is not stable. <laughs> like, please. <sighs> <laughs> Okay, Jean. Jean, glad I explained that. Um, the software still works, and we'll see what happens. And everyone, pray for Ukraine. Yeah, well, for sure. Especially the children. Oh yes, definitely. They have um, some newly uh, found cousins in Germany, um, and uh, she's ninety-three years old. But her children, her son, works at um, our equivalent of the TCF center or Kobo, the old Kobo hall. And they just, uh, he just texted me today to tell me that they took 900 um, refugees from Ukraine and they're staying there just on a temporary basis. But um, he said, when you said children, it reminded me of it because he said, it's, it's so sad. It's mostly women and children. And um, he said that to put a smile on the kids' faces just means so much to them. So. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, Is that a, all the questions we have? May I ask a question about a couple of months ago uh, topic? Okay. I checked that, I, I asked for you guys to help um, on finding a ship for my grandfather coming to America. And you suggested Steve Morris. I looked at every single ship and nothing. What do I do now? Uh, I thought I sent you something. Yeah, but I, I it was a Steve Morris thing. Um, um, hang on, let me look, see if I, I don't find remember email. getting anything necessarily. The correct email. <laughs> okay. G on my computer. Okay. Do you want me to say what it is? I was looking for the email here on my computer to figure oh, out okay. what, I, what I sent you on January 17th, four images okay. um, of the ship um, sailor, I believe it is, for the uh, 1881, okay. it, uh, the 5th, the 3rd of May, excuse me. Uh-huh. They're all from the same ship. Um, okay, on the 17th of January, huh? Okay. Uh, no, uh, um, no, the, yeah, that's the email I sent to you. Okay. And, uh, any chance uh, if you found it, you could resend that? Uh, yeah, I can, I believe. Okay. Port it. You're still using the AOL? Yeah, or you could okay, do. That's all I, right. Or or don't can, tell me over a line. Oh, okay. Okay, I just forwarded it to you. Um, 
If that doesn't show, you can email me the alternate email you have. Okay. All right. And I will send it to that one. Okay. After you send oh. the email. Okay. And I'll, I'll check junk too, uh, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was surprised that there were very few of the uh, surname I put in, very few. And I was surprised because it's a relatively common name. I'd have to look to see if it was a matter of um, poor handwriting that um, it was hard to read. And then, you know, the like, indexer for Ancestry or where, whoever did the index um, didn't mm -hmm. catch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I thought there would be far more. And, and I, I kept broadening the search to, you know, 10 years either side of what I said and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and, and I got nothing, um, et cetera. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Well, I figured we'd have a shorter one this time. <laughs> but, um, thank you everyone for coming. Um, we've already done the plug for next month's, uh, presentation. Um, and we want to thank the Mount Clemens All Public right. Library. Lisa, yep. uh -huh. don't forget to mention June. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I did that in the email. <laughs> yes, you did. All right. Yeah, okay. you did. In June, we our present our meeting is our MCG member medley, and um, we're looking for volunteers to present a story, um, whether it's about an ancestor or an event in the ancestor's life or uh, something you did um, research-wise that um, you can teach someone about a new resource. Um, we're 10 minute presentation, so, or five, or, you know, if we've got less people, we'll extend it to 15 or something like that. So it's about a slide a minute, or, you know, sometimes you, talk fast, you can slip another slide in there. Um, so if you're interested in participating, we have three right now. We could use about two or three more. Um, and um, I just watched another Ontario group uh, Monday night give their version of, they actually called it member medley. I, did, I know I searched and made sure I was trying not to duplicate the names um, of what they call this, but um, they just, the two I was managed to catch were basically, they were just, one was telling about their mom and dad and, you know, what they learned along the way. And then another one was just describing um, various surname lines that they've been searching and sharing, you know, images and whatnot with it. So um, they're going to vary. If you're interested, give me uh, an email and um, we'll talk about it and we'll help get you going. Um, I will have the uh, pre presentation record meeting recording from last month um, uh, edited and up within a week. And then that way we've got a few months to work with it uh, as far as uh, which, if you're interested, which program might work better for you um, and go from there. Just email them a comb code gg at gmail. I got okay. the email from you, Lisa. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. I'll look to see if I had any earlier emails that I sent. Okay. That maybe you didn't get. Okay. Thank you. How's the library going? Is there any, um, I, I haven't been by lately. Anybody have any status on how it's, Looking still August, um, it still looks like a uh, <laughs> yeah, but it's looking, it's coming along. Late summer. summer, okay, Late good. Summer. summer, ah, yeah, so exciting. Mm. What are they drilling in the parking lot? Is that underground <laughs> cables of some kind? Maybe for oil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably, I'm not sure. What the geothermal? It could it be, could yeah. Be, yeah. 
still looks rough. And my three-year-old grandson always says, that, that library burned. I say, no, it didn't. They're just making it better. No, nope, it burned. <laughs> the re yeah, resurfacing the outside too makes it, doesn't look so nice in the process. Yeah. Can't wait. Uh, yes, I believe as long as COVID numbers are Is that Lisa talking that we can't hear? Not sure. Okay. Huh. Is it going to be bigger in some spots, the library? If you go to the website, it shows the, the floor plan of upstairs and downstairs. It's okay. Going be, it's going to be pretty neat. Yes. Was the downstairs expanded too in the basement? Oh. The, yeah, the, it's our, being redone. The, It'll be yes, different. Very different. Okay, very updated but it, and modern. And it's so they dug more basement. No, no more no. basement. But no, there's a new stairwell of the basement. so that there's light yes. that goes down. Yeah, so repurposing the space for, I think the children's things are going to be down there. Mm. The mechanical rooms down there are. Lisa, you're not hearing you at all. We can see the side of your face from Teresa's screen, <laughs> but we can see the front of you too. Well, I think what Lisa was trying to say in, in reaction or to the meetings when the library reopens, depending on COVID numbers, yes, we plan on getting back to open meetings at the library once, uh, once the library reopens. <laughs> So the genealogy area is going to be down in the basement as well? Yes. Okay. Will they still be one o'clock on Fridays? Uh, Probably. <laughs> okay. No, I can get a bus at that time of day. I can't get one at night. Yeah. Once the library is open and COVID numbers are, are down enough, we'll probably go back to the uh, existing schedule. We just may have, it just may take us a couple more, couple or more months to transition to it since we've been kind of operating totally by a Zoom since COVID started. I really like the Zoom idea for, you know, these things because you can be anywhere. Necessarily. Mm -hmm. Zoom option doing meeting don't know what to bring in and how we're gonna have that before before that day happened. Uh, I think uh, I can you hear me? I saw this drawing. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. That uh, drilling, I think, is a hydro pump to draw heat from the earth for the heating system. Huh. Interesting. Um, instead of using fuel like gas, and they draw the heat from the ground. Oh, that's what I understood in one of their meetings. Very cool. Thank you for watching. Our next meeting is scheduled for April 13th, 2022. For our April meeting, the topic is Managing Family Catastrophe in the Early 1900s, presented by Beverly Bishop. Last but not least, MCGG extends its thanks to the Mount Clemens Public Library and its staff for hosting this Zoom meeting. Goodbye, everyone.